Hey guys, Brian with Vet Source back again Saturday today. Uh, nice cool mild day to do some work. Um, gonna get to swing back onto the LT1 here because as fortune would have it, uh, after I put that video out the other day uh, regarding the LT1 and the uh, rather well designed package that it was and how it works really well and you know just an all around good motor except with that one flaw that we were talking about was the uh, optic spark. I come back out uh, the day after I made that video. The next day we had a video or I actually had a lot of rain. I mean it rained all day long. So sure enough I came out to start the car again and it would not start. So today real quick what I'm going to do is kind of go over a little bit about what we were talking about before with this optic spark and where it's actually buried at. You cannot see much on this one just because everything is on top of it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys another um, LT1 that I have uh, in the storage that's kind of slightly dismantled so you can see how the setup goes. Down in here, just real quick, this is where your coil is at on the motor. And of course your ignition module that I've already taken loose is right here. And this is the passenger side cylinder head that I'm working on right now. So there's your ignition module, just literally bolts to the side of the head right there. And then of course there's your coil, which uh, multiplies or your voltage, uh, brings it up to a higher amperage volts so that it will fire the cylinders. And then of course your wire coming out of your coil, which is barely, you can see it right there, going straight behind underneath the intake right there that blue wire going into the distributor Let's see if I can show it where it comes in it's right there so you can see everything's pretty buried on this I'm going to show you even better on this other motor it's partially disassembled that I had the water pump off but real quick you know I'll show you guys for example now when it came out you know a motor needs three things a motor is basically just a fancy air pump so a motor needs air, fuel, and spark, right? So once you come in, and if you've done this for a while, you'll start to learn the sounds a motor's making as you're trying to start it. Now, of course, you can see I've got electrical power. You can see it'll turn over, right? But you hear that sound. Um, instinctively, again, I've been doing this for a long time. You can tell this thing's not getting any spark. It's not firing at all, because you'd actually hear a little blow back on the cylinders if it was even trying. So, uh, with that being said, what you can do, of course, now in this car here, there are two computers. Okay, there's an ECM, which is under the hood, I'll show you in a second. And then there's another one, there's a body control module that's buried back here behind this radio. The body control module mainly handles the security functions of the car. Um, now, if we had a security function issue with the body control module, what it would do is it actually would not even start. It would it would um, kill the starter and kill the fuel to the motor. But I'm pretty sure we're getting fuel because I can smell it come out of the exhaust. Um, then you can see here our service engine lights on that standard default position. And the other thing that it will also tell you is that you come in here, come in here, and you've got no sys message fa uh, flashing SYS. You can see there's not really any default or trouble codes going on with the CCM. Now one day I may show you guys how to pull up uh, all the codes on here, but for our purposes today, I know pretty pretty certain I'm getting a no fuel, uh, not a no fuel, and no spark. So again, CCM is underneath that back section behind the radio, designed, difficult to get out on purpose. There's our electronic control module, which actually do go bad pretty quick. Now, the one thing about it is I've tested this already and I know it's actually communicating with the scan tool so I know more than likely it's not the computer because the computer will tell on itself if it's going bad. So you know the simple thing is basically to check this and of course spark to your motor you're just gonna get a simple little spark testing tool right disconnect the spark plug in this case on the LT1 the easiest one to get to is the uh, number four on passenger side and of course when you're talking cylinder numbers left is odd right is even okay so one two three four five six seven eight so your number four you're going to check it hooking your spark tester of course i've got no spark to the cylinders so what i want to do is work my way backwards 
And since I can't get to that distributor, I'm gonna go ahead and check the, the fire coming out of the coil, disconnect that line there, hook that into the coil, and see if the coil is pulsing. And of course, I've already done that, so I know that the coil is pulsing. So I know that our failure mode, something's happening inside the distributor. Now in our case, where we had a bunch of rain the other day, obviously what we're dealing with is moisture inside the cap um, that got in there after the rain started. And you can see I've got the car parked on concrete, but that's just one of the main issues that comes up on these is that if they don't get driven often or things like that, moisture has a chance to build up in them. So give me a second, I'm gonna go over to where I've got the motor stored that's partially dismantled, and I'll show you guys what the cap looks like, what the distributor assembly looks like, where exactly it's positioned, so you can get a better idea of what you're working with when you're trying to troubleshoot. But simple enough, like I said, spark tester will tell you if you got spark to the cylinders, if you've got little or no spark going to cylinders, you run it back and check it on your coil side. If you've got power coming out of the coil, then you know you've isolated it to the distributor. If you don't have any power coming out of the coil, then you've got a problem with the wiring going to the coil or the coil itself or the ignition module, one of those three. So give me a second to get set up and I'll be right back. All right guys, I am back with our uh, LT1 motor that's already been pulled sitting on a stand so that I can kind of show you a little better in detail uh, what this ignition system uh, is, in, is comprised of and where it's positioned at. Now, first thing you're gonna notice, obviously, this LT1. This is a Corvette LT1, and it's really dirty. Uh, this one did not get a whole lot of preventive maintenance, but a lot of this comes from just seepage from those front valve covers there. This, this one had aftermarkets, but you can see those trademark Corvette D-Port aluminum heads uh, on these. And uh, then of course right here on this passenger side cylinder head is your coil assembly with your heat sink and then your uh, ignition module right there. And then uh, your wiring leading into this. These are your two hot wires coming in right here um, to the coil assembly. And this all just comes straight off that main wiring harness. And then of course your wire feeding out to your coil to your distributor. Now you see how nasty this distributor is. There's of course your ports where your water pump would be right there on either side. And you can see this, this distributor is just basically attached to the front of the timing chain cover on the motor. There's your drive gear for your water pump. And when we take this off of here in a second, this is the cap. I've got this loose kind of already and there's your main body, your housing. So imagine if you've seen uh, any of the Ford's Mopars uh, old school Chevys with a distributor in the back just driven off the back of the camshaft. This distributor is driven just off of a gear off of the front of the uh, camshaft, crankshaft. It's actually inside that housing, but I won't be able to show you there because I'm not going to take that off. So you can see here just underneath this position where it's at, how filthy and nasty this thing gets. Um, again, uh, you know, it makes you wonder why in God's name they decided to try this. I don't know if it was just, uh, let's throw the dart at the board and see how we can do with packaging. Now I will say that I think that they may have been aware of possibility of this being a difficult item or an item that would go bad. Uh, because what they did, which was kind of ingenious, you can see in traditional where you'd have to pull the harmonic balancer to get it out of here, they actually created a harmonic balancer hub. So the hub, I've already taken these bolts out, once you take those three bolts out, it just pulls right off. See, that's actually kind of cool. So your harmonic balancer will just come right off without having to use a puller, which on the Corvettes would be really, really tight in that spot. So there's your hub for your harmonic uh, balancer going straight into the crankshaft. Now again, you've got four safety bolts here, uh, T6 Torx, reverse Torx bolts. I've taken three of these out already. So what I'm gonna do real quick is take this cap off and I'm gonna show you what happens in here uh, as these sit. Uh, for some reason, I'm using my left hand instead of my right, even though I'm right-handed. Uh, let me switch this around to make my life a lot more easy. Um, so, there, oh, and the, the T6s, there's one here, there's one here, and then these two spots right here had the other ones. So, like I said, I took the other three out and then promptly dropped them in the trailer where I've got the stored, so I kind of lost them for the moment. So, you pull that out of there, right? Your cap comes off, and immediately, we pull the cap off, it looks just like 
a regular distributor. There's your rotor. Uh, there's your points right there. Your um, your firing points as it goes through, and your uh, coil comes through right in the center, and just hits that and then distributes that power out. Now, the other thing you're going to notice as soon as I pull this cap off is look at how filthy inside it is. That's at the bottom of the cap right there. All that crud and nastiness is just collected at the bottom, moisture collecting with time. So you can even see the edge of the uh, uh, the rotor itself, the tip, has you know blue corrosion all over it, dissimilar, the, the water reacting with it. So it's just gotten nasty over time. So obviously, these are major issues that have to be addressed, but of course the only way to get to this sucker is to pull the water pump and everything else off in front of it. So just a, an interesting thing to show how packaging sometimes, decisions on packaging, can affect a whole lot of things in a whole lot of different ways. Of course, there's where our coil wire comes in there at the top. And let's see if that'll come off. I'm gonna take this, put this to the side for the moment. Let me go ahead and I'm gonna get the main body distributor off and get my correct tool out here so you guys can see what we're working with. Now, the main body of the distributor is held on with three 10 millimeter bolts, one in the corner over here. And of course, yes, I did pre-loosen these already. Just so you guys don't have to sit and watch me for 45 minutes produce filler talk while I do this. We got this one out here, and then our last one is here. And, okay. And you're just basically, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. If I can, one-handed. Okay, that's our main power feed to our distributor right there. Okay, so that one came out. And then you see the distributor just comes straight off. Now, you see where it's driven through the front right there. That's the timing chain cover, and there's your drive gear for the distributor right there. So it's, I'll be honest with you, it's a really cool design, but it's all about real estate, like they say in the realtor business. It just didn't come, it didn't get put in the right spot. So this one really looks still pretty good, in good shape. So I may try to rehab this and set it aside, clean it up for my car just because I don't like throwing things away unless they're just trashed. You actually can change the rotor out in these and the cap. The main body itself is always uh, still a unit that'll stay put. So, um, to recap what we went over today, LT1, excellent motor, OptiSpark, kind of a neat design, bad location, okay? So, this is where the OptiSpark lives on an LT1 motor. I have seen some relocation kits for these, which I think are kind of intriguing although nothing I'm gonna look into. You can see here, that's just a reverse um, female thread coming off the top. This one has, I'm pretty sure this is the geared, small geared setup that's up at the top. If I'm remembering, no, I think that actually comes straight off the camshaft. And then this one here, there's another mini gear inside of here that spins through here. I just haven't pulled one down in a while and I'm not gonna have time to take the cap off today. So, if you're getting an LT1, you've got a no spark condition, or uh, you know, no start, no spark, rest assured, you know, you've got three major components to check. You've got this, your module, your coil, and your distributor. And if it's not either of these two, or a wiring issue, as far as 12 volts feeding to the whole assembly, then chances are you're gonna have a problem with your distributor. So, gonna wrap us up today. Like I said, just wanted to feature this again. I'm not hating on the LT1, I actually do like it as a motor itself. It's a really well built piece of equipment uh, by GM. It's sturdy, it's powerful. Um, it'll handle a whole lot of abuse and actually it will handle modifications even better than the previous tune port injection motors that I've talked about. Uh, I think in fact in my one of my last videos I did the, the uh, explanation of the tune port, consider that the first generation. I'll put a link up at the top of the video so you can see that one if you haven't checked that video out yet. But uh, that'll uh, kind of detail what we're looking at for the LT1 today. I'll probably be back later on this week with some more stuff for you guys. So check in, uh, you know, keep in touch if you got any questions for me, and we'll go from there. Thanks for watching again, guys. Check you next time.